Hello everyone, this is Joni, and um, I am finally back without my big enormous bandage on my face. And uh, I must say I am very, very happy that it's gone. And um, as you can probably see, I don't know if the camera is really picking it up or not, but uh, I have a large place here on my nose that uh, is not healed yet it's uh, the skin graft and um, but it's just um, I don't have to wear a bandage on it I just have to keep it moist with uh, a Vaseline and um, to keep it from drying out so much and uh, behind my ear it's the same way I had 11 stitches back here no it was 12 12 stitches back here and it's doing quite well too. So I'm just glad that all of that mess is over with because uh, when I finally got in there and um, everything, the front of my nose was from around the upper part of your nostrils here on the outside. From there up and all the way across the bridge of my nose, it was as red as, I don't know if you can see or not, but the top of my nose. It was just that red. And I'm assuming that um, it was something coming from that cancerous growth or whatever. And um, so now it has uh, turned down. It, it's, it isn't nearly as red as it was before I had the surgery. And uh, he said that it would be probably about another month before. I don't can't wear makeup. I can't um, put my glasses on the correct way. And I've, I've been editing some of my uh, comments back to you from where you all sent me comments in. And uh, I really spelled some of your names incorrectly. And because I was, was having to wear my glasses like this, turned backward and looking out and it started giving me an eye infection. Now, I don't know what in the world that would have to do with anything, but it did, and um, uh, my eye was really red, and uh, it was getting inflamed, and I was having uh, drainage from the centers, and um, not the center, but the corners. And um, so um, I noticed that every time I'd put those glasses up there to try to read what you guys had written to me, uh, it would start getting uh, inflamed again, and it would get real blurry, and I was getting with my left one, because I'm still using readers, and at my age, I am very proud of that. I really am. I, my eyes have served me <laughs> beyond call of duty, the way I uh, read, and um, all the reading I had to do in school, and, and everything like that. And throughout my life with the kids taking, you know, I was always interested in their school and their school work. And, think, and I was an avid reader when I was younger. And uh, that's all I did was read. I, I just, I love to read. And um, now I have slowed down on it quite a bit lately. But uh, used to be I had some kind of a book going all the time. I was just reading constantly. And I think that's really good for uh, people, and I think they should read a lot because it keeps your mind alert, which mine is becoming very, very not alert. And uh, But I don't like to get on here without makeup and, and all such things as that. But there comes a time when vanity has to be cast aside and just say, I'm human, and this is the way I look, so... Uh, but I was very, very happy to get to wash my hair the normal way. Uh, my daughter had been taking a washcloth with soap on it. Now, not shampoo because it was made. Uh, I'm allergic to too many things, and I have to have them rinsed extremely well when I put it on. But she was just using a washcloth with soap on it and trying to wash my hair with that and just get around basically on my scalp and uh, on the outer edges of my hair to keep it clean enough to where I could live with it. And um, 
I had thought that I would go. Uh, Walmart's is near my house, and um, I thought I would go down there and have it washed, but I couldn't because of behind my ear, the stitches back there. And she told me, she said, Mom, she said, you get some kind of a germ in that. And she said, I wouldn't trust anyone putting water up around that uh, because it was really close. I mean, that thing goes up here, way up here between my eyes. Just It's right in between my eyebrows. And um, she said, I wouldn't take a chance on it. So that's how we worked on that. And... Uh, she got me tickled. She would wash my hair an inch with the washcloth, and then she would rinse it as well as she could get it rinsed. And then she would take my chair that I was seated on, uh, which is one of these little fold-up chairs. It was in my bathroom, and she would do that in one sink, and then she'd tell me, okay, Mom, you move down to my other station, my next station. So she'd move me down to the next one that was near my, I've got three closets in my master bath, and I call one of them my Christmas closet, and uh, so that's how we know which closet I'm talking about. One is my number one closet, the other one's in my number two, and then I've got the one that's in my number three closet, which is, I call it Chris, my Christmas closet. But anyway, she would say, okay, move, uh, Mom, move down to my next station, and that was down in front of the other sink, and that was near the Christmas um, closet. That's where I had my hair dryer stored. So then she would get the hair dryer and she would uh, blow my hair dry. And it came relatively clean. I mean, it was better than just letting it go, that's for sure. And But you will never know how much, how good it felt when I finally was able to get in that shower and turn that water on my scalp. But I still had to hold my hands over my nose like this because... He said he didn't want any water hitting my nose at all. So I had to do that the day I went back to him. And um, so um, all in all, I am so thankful for all of your prayers. I, I'm just very, very thankful for all of you and that those of you that wrote to me wishing me well and, and for a speedy recovery and all that, things like that. I'm just so thankful for you guys doing that because it really does mean a lot when a person is not well and um, in the middle of the night you're lying there and you're thinking all these different thoughts that can come into your mind. I'm telling you, the human mind is, God knew what he was doing, I guess, when he, I know there's no I guess to it. Uh, the human mind is mer a miracle. And... Um, but you can think up all these things that you really shouldn't be thinking of because God tells us not to be afraid and not to worry. And if I could just conquer that worry factor, I don't think I'd have near as many problems as I have. But I do tend to worry a lot. And um, so uh, anyway, uh, while I was recuperating, which was a month, and I can't believe that when this started, that it would take a month for before I could have my uh, bandage removed. Because I thought I was going to get the bandage off the first two weeks. But no, it wasn't really a bandage. It was a dressing. And he did the most uh, method. I don't know if, if you guys have heard of it or not. But it's really one that you should seek a doctor that does that if you are having uh, some malignant growths taken off of your skin. Uh, because it's um, the Mohs method, what he does, he cuts some on it. And then he cuts what he thinks is basically the part that was showing. Then he takes that and he has his own um, clinic there. It's a big clinic. And uh, he goes in and he does his own lab work. And he looks at those cells that he has cut off of there and he checks them himself nobody else does it he does it himself and that made me feel really good and uh, if there's any um, signs of it still growing to the outside of what he has brought in there he comes back in and he takes more off of it he takes another layer off and he keeps going down layer by layer until he gets back the results um, he goes in there and he checks and and it's all clear. And uh, so 
after I was completely awake and everything like that. And they wanted me to take something to um, sort of put me to sleep. It was some uh, medication that just sort of made you drowsy, but um, I didn't want it, so I said, I don't need it. And uh, so I was awake through the procedure, and um, he came back, and the nurse did, and told me that I was clear and that he had gotten all of the cancer. And it really, because I told you about this in the other video, but I think that it helps to stress it because up until a few years ago when you went in and you had a malignancy removed, they would take that right then to the lab and have it checked. And if all of the malignancy was not gone, they would go ahead further and, and remove the rest of it. But that's not the way they do now. They make you wait 10 days. And by the time you wait 10 days, there's a lot of healing going on. And the incision is closed up, and of course, and usually the ones I had were stitched and was well on its way to healing. And uh, then if they found anything differently, then they're going to have to go back and then open that up again. But the way he does it, he knows when you're still sitting there in that chair, he knows if he has to go deeper or if you are ready and he can go ahead and put that dressing on you and send you home. So I would uh, thoroughly recommend that if you have to have any kind of uh, surgery for cancer on your skin anywhere, to have a doctor that performs the MO uh, surgery. It's M-O-E, I believe that's the way it's spelled. And um, uh, it is wonderful because when I walked out of there, I knew that I was walking out at least in this one place right here, cancer-free. Now the rest of my body, I wouldn't tell you. But this one part I knew was cancer-free. So that makes you feel really, really good. And uh, I came home and I could just breathe a deep sigh of relief because I had worried about that for, it had been probably about a year almost that I had that on there and I knew it had to come off. And I knew what it was, but some doctors you go to and they don't think it is. And they don't want to do a biopsy on it because they don't think it's necessary and they think you're just being a worry wart. And um, I'm not a worry wart when it comes to things like that. I know what my skin does and I know my body pretty well. So anyway, uh, it's all taken care of now. And um, the, I don't know if you, without makeup, you can probably see that I have a large red place right here. Now he checked it and he said right now it's nothing. I don't have to worry about it. He said, but we will keep a check on that. And he called it a keratosis, I think it was. And um, he said, um, if anything further develops, we'll catch it. When it's in the first stages, in other words. And he won't have to go through all of this for me. But uh, I was just really happy to know that that was so deep in there that... Um, he had to take that much skin out that he had to go behind my ear and take it out of there to put onto my nose. Now, if it just heals good and doesn't cause a big lump or something there on my nose, I'm going to be thankful for even more. But uh, if it does, it does. At my age, I really don't care that much. Uh, I care some, of course, but uh, compare it to cancer. And there's no comparison, because I'll take my life any time over a lump on my nose if I have to have it. So I'm just um, trying to get on with things now and getting used to being able. Now, I still there's some things I can't do, but um, with uh, it going like it is right now, I can shower, I can uh, wash my hair, I can do all of the things that um, I was so used to doing every day. And uh, so uh, I haven't been going out, though, because down here, I don't know how it is in your um, country where you live, but uh, what place you live in, a state or whatever, but the flu is rampant down here, and there are people dying left and right. There were two funerals last week of people who had died from the flu, and there's one guy in a, a wheelchair now because of the flu. And uh, so I told Tanya, I said, don't you all go out unless you absolutely have to go out. And I said, if you do, 
if I were them, I would wear a mask. I, I am not a bit too good to put a mask on and go right on because that is just being, uh, I think, very good. It's being sensible because um, uh, nobody wants that stuff. And I think that the schools really should be shut down if they're having too many absentees. And I think that they should act proactively about it because they said the last time that we had this flu, it killed, um, or one similar to it, killed 600 and some thousand people. So that's not to be just sort of sniffed at and go on, you know, uh, because with the children in those schools, kids, they don't pay any attention. Everything they touch, then their fingers go in their mouth or around their nose, and they have colds and things, and they're sneezing. And then they touch the things the other children use, and then the children bring them home. So um, if I were in charge of uh, the situation until the, this flu got under uh, wraps, I would close the schools and prevent as much of it as I could. My son called me um, uh, last week, I think it was, and he said, Mom said, we didn't go to church this week. He said, uh, we watched it on TV. He said, but we didn't go. He said, the flu is just too bad where we live. And he said, I don't want to take a chance on giving it to the kids. And uh, him getting it because he has to work. And uh, so he didn't want to take a chance on getting it and bringing it in for the family. So uh, he goes out because he has to, and then that's, I guess that's it. So um, I hope that it isn't as bad in your all's um, um, hometowns or wherever. Because, um, like I said, it, it isn't anything simple. And they say that it usually is so bad uh, on you within the second day people are dying people are dying the second day they have it and I don't know from what that is but evidently it must be vicious I mean vicious now the virus I had went during Christmas I ran a temperature and I was so sick, and Tanya told me the other day, she said, Mom, she said, I didn't say anything to you, but she said, when I would come to bring your food, because uh, I have my utility door uh, room door goes out into my garage, and she would, I would raise the garage up, and she would bring me food and reach it to me through my utility room door, but she wouldn't come in because I wouldn't let her. And uh, she would say, when I would see you, she said, you were just totter, and she said, you couldn't even stand up straight. And I knew that because I was just wo wobbling all over the place to get back into the kitchen and back into my bed. And um, I don't guess I had that flu. I don't think that I did. I ran a fever, but I was I was really sick. But I don't think I was at the point that these people are because, like I said, they are dying the second day they have it, a lot of them. And uh, so I don't know, but... Anyway, I'm just hoping that they get it under uh, control within the next very short while because I'm better now and I still can't go out because I am scared to death to go out because I just don't want to catch that stuff on all that I've... I have been really to where I could not do anything since the week of Thanksgiving other than put my little tree up in there, my pencil tree. And... Um, uh, my fireplace, um, uh, my uh, mantle. That's that's all I've been able to do since uh, I didn't even I couldn't even put my Thanksgiving uh, decorations up like I had them last year, and that just oh that just really it got me. I think that's what got me so depressed is because um, I couldn't do a lot of the things that I really wanted to do, and um, so anyway. Uh, now, while I would have been ill, um, Tanya, she's still making her videos just left and right and carrying on like she always does. And uh, when she would go out to get supplies for herself, she would buy some things for me. And uh, she would bring them home to me, but I really wouldn't even look at them because I was afraid to touch them, to tell you the truth. I didn't even want to round them. And so she just brought them in here in my studio and, and put them in here. And uh, then today I got up and I looked at some of them. And she bought me some of the paper that was on sale at Michael's. 
and um, it was really pretty paper. I think she must have it over there in my paper bins, though. I haven't seen it uh, today, but she has been buying me some other things, so I will show you some of the few things that uh, she has bought me uh, and brought them to me, and, and it did keep me cheered up some. At least I knew that there was hope that I might be getting out of that bed at some time. This is a sticker album that she got me at um, Walmart. I'm having a lot of glare. I bought studio lights, and I'm telling you, they're still not acting like they should. Uh, but um, these are just little stickers for um, my uh, planner. And uh, I'm going to put them down here in this thing that I brought around here. And uh, these are little cards that you... Um, uh, they're little um, things that you, stickers, and you, um, she bought the pens with it too. She bought me two of these and two of the pen sets. And uh, what you do is color uh, these with the pens, and um, then you put them on in your sticker, in your uh, planner book. And I think that uh, those are really cute. So uh, she bought me some of those. And um, she thought that would keep me encouraged some. And then, um, now this is something that I bought myself before I got sick. And this is for the planter, though. And it's uh, pine trees. And uh, it doesn't have to be Christmas to use these. Uh, Any time in the winter, you could use those. Or if you were using some kind of a forest theme or something like that. Now, Tanya did a planter thing the other day. I thought it was just really nice. I, I love the idea of it. And uh, she did the Super Bowl. And uh, I thought that was very clever on her part. And um, people just loved it. She bought these. They're little, the little hearts. You all probably have seen them more than I have because I'm just looking at them when I came in here a minute ago. Uh, these are the little hearts with the, the centers cut out. And so are these. And then these are the full hearts down here. And um, this is, um, it doesn't say how many. It's a dollar, so I, I'd say this is for probably from um, either the Dollar Tree or from uh, uh, Target. She got that, and then she got these. This is probably Target, I'm not sure. These are the little satin hearts, and... Um, they're all red except this one little silver one. I think a couple silver. Uh, that will be used for Valentine's Day. And uh, those are really pretty. They're puffy. How many did that have? Using these glasses. You haven't lived until you have to use your glasses backward. A 25 count. There's 25 in this. And I think they're really cute. And uh, then she bought me these. And uh, they're also hearts. And um, these were $2.99, 12 counts of these. And um, like I said, oh, they're, they're divided. Some is glitter, part of the heart is, and then some is solid in the middle. And then it has little rhinestones and things on the inside of it. So that is, that is cute to use in your planner. And um, then she got me this. Um, it's a rubber stamp. And I thought that was cute. Um, I thought that I had a heart, but um, I probably do, but I probably just can't locate it. I did get some other things to put my stuff in, though, before I got sick. So, But I haven't been able to arrange anything. Now, she bought this. Um, these are some more stickers for um, the planner or whatever you would want to use them on. A lot of people, I have noticed, though, are really uh, wanting to start uh, using the planners. And this is the hearts, and um, don't know what is on that. My eyes have definitely gotten worse. I know that much since I got sick. And I've been using the back of my glasses because uh, what I could see before, I sure cannot now. This has 90 count. So this has 90 things on it, it says. 
But um, my eyes have gotten a lot worse. And these are some snowflakes that I bought before Christmas um, uh, when I was well uh, for my planner. And, uh, and that just fell out of the thing. And then these are some little hearts. Some of them, well, most of them are um, folded like fans in the fan shape. And um, you can put those on your... I did see, though, when the last time I worked in the planner, I'm going to have to start taking those um, little glue things that build your planners up to uh, separate the pages. I'm going to have to start taking those out because um, they make it too... Um, thick and it doesn't want to close properly so I'm going to take them down to where maybe I might leave one in it but some of mine have three in it and it makes it a lot prettier but um, with the, the happy planner that I have um, you can't do it so that's um, one sheet and it has uh, just only you adore you and I like you and you're number one and and uh, things like that. And I think that this probably was from, uh, if I was guessing, well, it's got to be Dollar Tree or Target because it was a dollar. And this is the same thing except uh, it says Be Mine and it's got a dog on it. And a bunch of little things that would be nice for your planner. Um... Now, if I could put my glasses on like I'm supposed to, I would be able to look through the thing that I'm showing this on and um, tell you what it says, but I can't. So, I'm having to, um, and by the way, I've been looking into that thing too, so um, I can tell where I need to go better if I look into it than I can if I look into the lens of the camera. And um, sometimes uh, if my shirt is not fixed the way that it should be. I can tell and adjust it and things like that. But um, that's another little thing that she got me. And that is a, a see, package of 15. And um, that's cute. Now it has uh, several that are uh, dimensional. But they're just one looks like. And this one, this one's cute too. So every time she would go out to get herself something, she would get some. Uh, this is um, some cards that uh, she bought for me. And I think they're really pretty. Um, they're really, they're just, um, they have things that would be very nice in your planner. And you can take these things and you can cut them separately. And use them on pages for Valentine's Day. Or you can do several things with them, really. And uh, she got me three, I think, of those. And this one, she knows that I love hot air balloons. So uh, she bought me this card for, uh, for the hot air balloons that was on it. And then there's one on the back, too. And um, these have, uh, I think this one has... A little um, three, one little three-dimensional thing with it, and I think that that will be really cute too for um, the planner. And then here's the other one. She got me two of those because she knows that I really love. Um, and then she bought me this. Um, that's cute. It's for my daughter, for my sweet daughter, and she is very sweet and. Uh, I don't know what I would do without her. And um, then inside it um, just has some hearts and a little saying. And then on the back it has a piece of candy. But all those things can be used really quite nicely in your planners. And uh, this is an alphabet a stencil set that she got me. I think she got these at either Target or Dollar Store. The other things, I'm not sure where they came from. But there's uh, two. This, these are two-inch alphabets that you can uh, use um, anything that you want to on them. To uh, you can paint them with watercolors, or 
you can uh, use just about anything uh, to uh, color them in. And then this is another little thing that she fixed, that she bought. And um, this came from the dollar store. And uh, these robots are really getting big this year at Dollar Tree. And then this is the little thing down here that the, um, oh, I think it was the Simpsons used to use in that cartoon, that little um, spacecraft that they carried on in and everything. And this is another stencil board that she bought. And you um, can move it around this way. And there's a new stencil comes up each time that you put it in this. So that would uh, give a lot of uh, different looks in your planner. And here's another one, but this one, instead of those were just uh, designs, and they, these are words. Uh, this one says, dream big. I can get my fingers between this. Uh, dream big and um, make it happen. And um, a be mine. I've got this to where you can even see it. If I don't watch this viewfinder, I don't. I can't tell where things are. Okay, there that is. And then the next one is. Um, it's hard for me to see. Um. Well, I hate to even put my glasses on. I'll be you. Um, be, um, I can't figure that next word out. Be proud. And be uh, something else. I can't figure that last word out. Uh, but it's, um, it's it has some nice stickers on them. And then she got me two of these. And they're just a little things that you can use if you want to write on these instead of writing on your different pages. And um, then she um, got me this, and I think this is just gorgeous. I really do like this. I think it's just beautiful. It is um, so pretty. And um, it's a paper bag. And, um, of course, it has glitter on the front, but it doesn't have it on the back. I would like to have about four of those, and I would go ahead and uh, fix them for my kitchen, like I did my Christmas um, shopping bags. Uh, but uh, that's all I have. Well, I showed you my washi, I think. Uh, I don't know. I had filmed some other things. And I don't know if that was after the camera turned off and I didn't know it was off or not. But um, she bought me uh, four of those big clear. There's, there's probably about, I'm going to say, eight rolls of washi in each one of them. And um, she bought me four of those. So... Um, uh, I got some nice washi. I have a, quite a bit of washi. And I'm storing mine in... Uh, when I was doing cross-stitch, um, I started using um, those um, things. Well, I could probably show you a lot. Well, I don't want to go back there and get it. I'll show you on one of my next videos. Um, they're little cases, and they're made out of clear plastic. And they have individual sections in it. And I had so much embroidery floss where I did so much cross stitch that I had to have something to keep it all separated. I think I have probably about five of those in my drawer in my bedroom. And um, so um, I knew that they were really good for that particular thing. So I told uh, Tanya, I said, I'm going to go ahead and get... Um, 
some of those and start seeing what I can do with my washi in it because you just can't keep up with washi if you don't have some way of storing it. And uh, trying to find what you want to use on each page and all that stuff, it's a real headache. So I went down to Walmart and uh, I got, uh, I think it was three of them. And I came home and I filled them up, totally up. And uh, I uh, kept on getting more and more washi and I went back and got some more. And now I have, I would say, I probably have six if not seven, and I need really another one. So I have enough washi tape now to do me for quite a while because I'm getting to where I even like some of my spreads without the washi tape because in some of them I think that the washi tape takes away from uh, the actual pictures and things like that. And uh, it has to be really prepared right if uh, you want the... Uh, washi tape to give it an accent instead of detracting from the layout. But uh, I'm getting better with my planners and I'm getting much better, you all will be happy to know, in cutting my washi tape and putting it on. Oh, I was terrible when I first started it and I'm the first to admit it because uh, I had never used washi tape before and um, I just went ahead and uh, started getting in there and uh, making it work. And so I got pretty good, I'm pretty good with it. Well, at least I was the last time I fixed it, I'll put it that way. But that's not gonna deter me anymore because I'm just gonna go ahead and fix it. And um, I've noticed a lot of the, guy, of the girls who are uh, working on their planners with it, uh, they just put it on there and if it's a little bit crooked, they just go on. And uh, there's one particular girl and she is one that is, she has, oh my goodness, she has subscribers running out her ears, just about. And uh, she will even let it tear sort of in a um, diagonal. And uh, she doesn't pay any attention to it at all. So um, I'm not going to let the washi tape upset me that much anymore because I'm the type of crafter when I do something, everything has to be done exactly right. And I'm used to having it everything come out exactly like it's supposed to. And that's where I've been all my life. And so I just, uh, some of the things that, that we work with here, you just can't have it come out exactly right every time. But that's what I've been striving for was perfection. And perfection has left me back some years ago. And so now I am no longer a perfectionist. I am, but I just can't achieve the perfection that I would like to have. So if I could achieve the perfection, I'd be about 40 pounds lighter and um, a lot more exercise. And there'd be a lot of things I'd change around. But uh, so I'm getting along now with just the way that... Um, I'm working with what I have, let's put it that way. I'm working with the ability I have now, not the way I used to have it. it used to be I could make anything I wanted and it came out exactly the way I wanted it, but no longer and I'm not going to um, worry about it. But uh, I am going, uh, this video has been pretty long. I have, I've been thinking though, until I get to where, I tried to use my glasses last night. In fact, I did use, them to answer some of my things comments and when I got through my eyes were all red and they were getting very um, watery again and uh, so it definitely is harming my eyes looking through my glasses backward like that but that's the only way that I can see to read anything and um, so I have uh, decided that um, I might just come on and um, just talk a little bit uh, until I get to where I can wear my glasses uh, on my nose because I don't have to wear them all the way up here. I wear them down here on the bottom part of my nose anyway. And it, this is getting better uh, by leaps and bounds. And uh, you can tell the difference in it just about every day. So I think that uh, it will give me getting better to where I could wear my glasses maybe within the next week or so. But I think in the meantime, just to where I can keep in contact with you and uh, 
let you know what's going on in my life and tell you about some of the hilarious things that have happened in my life uh, in the past and uh, then tell you about some of the things that have not been hilarious. They have been devastating uh, in my life. I, I'm not going to talk about my husband because I already put that on um, uh, one of my videos, so I won't be talking about that. But I have other things that uh, I have gone through in my lifetime that um, I think it it's one of the things that makes me the person I am today. And uh, uh, some of the things you just, it would be hard to believe um, to hear some of the stories that I do have. And Tanya has always wanted me to write about them and to write a book. And I started writing a book, and um, I even had um, this, um, I think it's, oh dear, I forget what it's called. I want to call it octopus, but I don't think that's right. I, I always wanted to call it that, but I don't think that's right. It's where you just talk into your um, um, speaker on your, um, uh, that they give you. And on your computer and it types for you. You don't have to type anything. And um, I had one of those and I, it was working really, really well. And my computer blew up. It just stopped working. It, it got hot and the fan started blowing and it wouldn't turn back on again. So I had just bought a new Macintosh. So, uh, um, I had it to use for, you know, uploading the videos and things. So I didn't worry about that part of it, but I still liked my other one. It was not an Apple product. It was, um, oh, I think it was a Dell. And I have never seen a computer that was as good as it was. And it had a very, very big screen for it. And I kept it in my bedroom all the time. And... Um, uh, when it stopped working, I stopped writing, and I didn't continue writing on my book. But uh, I would like to get back into it and uh, start writing some other things because, like I said, there are so many things that I have experienced during my lifetime that um, I think that uh, you would find them interesting, to say the least, and uh, I wouldn't put them on film if I didn't think that you would be interested in it. But um, I think that's what I will do until I um, uh, get my nose to where I can wear my glasses and start making my projects like I want to because I have several different ideas that, and people are writing me, tell, asking me to make different things too. So. Uh, they are letting me know what they would like for me to make. So that's good for me because um, it lets me know what exactly they want to see and everything. So uh, I'm going to try to, if I can get out and get the materials. And uh, by the time that my nose gets better, I'm hoping that this flu will be sort of... Um, uh, easing down a little bit and um, but uh, that's what I'm planning on doing I think that I'll just come on and uh, just talk with you guys if you want to watch it that's fine if you don't want to watch it that's also fine but uh, I think that it will resonate with uh, a lot of people who hear the things because like I said some of them are absolutely hilarious and then some of them are um, devastating so, um, and, um, so you'll just have to decide whether you want to watch it or not. But with that, I'm going to sign off on this. And, um, uh, once again, I'm sorry that the camera shut off on me, but it did. And, um, so I had to watch the movie that I had made to try to see where it had stopped filming. And so I had to go back and sort of pick up and um, so you may see a little glitch there where I had to splice the uh, uh, film together. But other than that, I think it will be okay. And um, 
I will talk with you guys again um, in the near future. I won't be as long as I have been. Probably about uh, maybe three days or, or four, something like that. And I'll try to get my brain uh, gathered all the information up that um, I, I want to talk about uh, with you. And some questions that you might have for me that you didn't um, ask before because I know a lot of people have questions that they would like to know from me, but um, they just don't want to ask. And uh, so maybe I can answer some of those questions for you. Okay, but I'm going to let you go right now. And thank you for tuning into my video and watching. And uh, thank you for being there for me once again. And uh, hopefully this will be uh, the worst thing that will happen to me for quite some time. And um, we can just uh, laugh and have a good time and uh, make nice, nice projects. So I'll talk with you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.